Welcome to the first in a series of videos to set the mood for our new course, Learning PLC Programming Using Micro 800 Controllers with Connected Components Workbench. I say mood setting because the first six or seven discussions are very generic, but they lay the groundwork for all the rest of the course. And the first one is going to be discussing what does a PLC do? And the reason we start there is because when you're selecting a solution for a problem, you have to know what the tools, what the resources do in order to know what to select. So we're just going to start right at the beginning with what does a PLC do? Your logic. Your logic originates in your brain. It is a result of something that you want to accomplish, which is stored in your memory and the result of your observation from your five senses. Now we're not going to use all five senses in our example. That is what you have for input and your output from your logic is a muscular action. Essentially you clone your observations and reactions into the programmable logic controller. And here's an example. You have the responsibility to run a conveyor with the sole purpose of moving a carton to an exact spot on the conveyor and then leave it there. You have a forward and a reverse momentary push button to run the conveyor. Reverse is there just in case you aren't paying close enough attention and you have to back it up. You observe a carton rolling down and resting against the de-energized leading edge of the belt conveyor. You focus your eyes on the spot on the conveyor where you want the carton to come to rest and you press the forward button and when it comes to rest, you stop. Keep in mind that you did not stop the conveyor with your finger. Your muscle reaction released the forward button that opened a contact to remove electricity from the motor, the motor de-energized, and the conveyor stopped. There were three elements to our illustration. Your eyes, your logical processing of the image from your eyes in relationship to what you had stored in your brain as a goal. Your eyes observed the position of the object and your reaction to the logical reasoning with your finger on the push buttons forward, release, or reverse. Input, logic, output. This is a continuous loop of visual observation, logical conclusion, and output at the push buttons. Look first, then think, take an action. Let's replace these three elements with three devices. An input device, a logical device, and an output device. Because we have precision with the photo sensor, we do not need a reverse action to position the object, just forward start stop control. The photoelectric switch is placed where you want the object to stop in that position. When the object interrupts the optical path of the sensor, the controller knows that the object has arrived. The output of the controller operates an electronic switch contacts, just like the push button, to run the conveyor until the optical path of the photo sensor is blocked. When the path is blocked, then the conveyor stops. The logic that was in your head that's now cloned into the controller states that if the photosensor is not blocked, the conveyor runs. If the photosensor is blocked, then the controller through the output releases the contacts and the conveyor motor de-energizes and there sets the object. The output from the photosensor to the controller is binary. Something is blocking or not blocking. Zero or one, zero volts or 24 volts DC. The current logic is limited to running the conveyor forward until the photo eye is blocked, since it's an object. If you want to do more with the programmable logic controller, then you have to give it more instructions. To give it more instructions, you have to give it more information. Here we've expanded our input to three positions on the conveyor belt. Now with your eyes, you think of your eyes roaming the full length of the whole system. Well, a controller can't do that. It has to have a photoelectric sensor or some sort of sensor for every single position. Here we have three. So if we have a carton come down the gravity feed conveyor, 2PE photo I2 tells the controller, tells the logic against whatever's in memory, that there is a carton available to come onto the conveyor. At that point, the conveyor can then pull the carton onto the conveyor until it blocks 1PE photo I1 and then it stops. Now you have a carton blocking 1PE and 2PE, then the controller can decide further what to do next 
because it knows that there is a carton at 2 PE, a carton at 1 PE, and nothing at 3 PE. Now what it doesn't know is exactly where those cartons are sitting on the conveyor and what position they're in blocking the photo eye because you see you could slide those cartons back and forth. So there's always more to it. This is just kind of a light introduction. In this little brief discussion we took a situation where we have an operator, a human being that's going to run a system, that's going to follow some instructions to accomplish a task in a system. And we looked at it from the point of view of the operator because when all is said and done, we're going to replace the operator's senses with sensors, we're going to replace their brain with a processor, and we're going to integrate it all together in a PLC or a controller. We have a couple more discussions that we want to present before we get to the crux of the matter. And so we will continue on the next one.